everybody. Welcome to my channel, The Healing Heart. I'm Calgan, you're you, and let's go through this together. And in today's video, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the difficulties of uh, staying in no contact when you've decided to go into no contact. And as time goes along, uh, it can get a little bit harder. You might feel quite determined in the initial stages, um, but uh, again, as time goes along, you can start to really, really feel urges that you want to break no contact and you want to contact that person. And in a lot of ways, depending on your emotional state, um, that can actually be quite damaging to the situation and also to your mental state of mind. Okay, so the thing with no contact is it's basically more about not reaching out to that person, but also not completely ignoring them if they reach out to you, depending on what it is you want. Uh, if you really don't want anything to do with that person anymore, then you're well within your rights to just ignore anything they send to you. Um, but one of the coaches that I've worked with called Mouth of the Ape, who you can find on YouTube, uh, I agree with his sentiment, uh, instead of it being called no contact, it's more called self-love, okay? What you're trying to do is trying to protect yourself from further hurt, further rejection, further embarrassment, um, you know, more self-respect, that sort of thing. It's not about trying to get your partner back uh, although they may miss you in the short term, but after some time, they probably will just move on with their life, okay? So please don't look at no contact as a means of getting your ex back. If you go into no contact and just sit around marking days off the calendar or sitting by the phone waiting for them to call, it's probably going to work against you and drive you further into that hole. So it's a good thing to reframe the phrase no contact into self-care or self-love, okay? So let's have a quick look now at some of the reasons uh, that you'll get these urges to break no contact. So you've gone into no contact and a week's gone by or a few weeks have gone by a month, you know, and again, the longer it goes, the harder it gets. Two months go by and there's absolutely been no contact at all. So your brain will start coming up with reasons as to why you should break no contact and contact your ex-partner. Okay, now the first and probably the biggest reason is separation anxiety. Now this is, this is what really gets felt early on uh, in the breakup, but um, and, and seems to subside a little bit as time goes by. But <clears throat> that's probably the, the main reason why you, you know, you're having these thoughts about, oh, I'll, I'll just come up with something to contact that person. Uh, it's that anxiety. And anxiety, you know, it makes us do things that uh, we, sh we perhaps shouldn't. So just consider that. I mean, are you contacting that person to alleviate your own anxiety or are you contacting that person for them because if you're not hearing from them then it's probably because they don't want to talk to you or you know they they've moved on or they're moving on and they they don't want if they wanted to talk to you they know where you are they know how to get hold of you um, so are you contacting them to alleviate your own anxiety uh, which is you know I'm not going to say selfish, but it's more about you rather than them. Okay. Um, the other reason, well, and another reason is closure. Okay. I've just got to contact that person because I want to get closure. But unfortunately, um, I'm telling you now, closure doesn't really come from uh, the other person. Okay. Uh, it comes from time. It comes from healing really nothing they can say is going to bring that closure. Uh, you might uh, meet them for coffee or lunch or something and have the talk, you know, uh, 
and they will say, oh, well, you know, sorry, it didn't work out. We had a great time. Uh, hope you'll be okay. Glad, you know. But then when after that meeting, if you're still in that mindset of uh, wanting to be with them, trying to repair the relationship, it's, um, you're going to come away from that meeting maybe feeling better in the short term, but uh, again, it's going to creep up on you. I, it's very, very rare that you're going to walk away from that meeting going, oh, I've got closure now. Closure will only come from time passing and you concentrating on your healing and uh, focusing on yourself and your life and your path uh, going forward from here. Okay. Uh, another mistake, this, this is a mistake to, to contact them, that's for sure, is to try and convince them. Try to convince them that you should be together. Try to convince them that they've made the wrong decision. Uh, you know, telling them that you're, you're totally devastated or saying, you know, why can't we work this out? And in your mind, you're going, you know, I, I feel that we should be together and um, we're supposed to be together. If I could just convince them to see that or see the changes that I've made or any of those things, uh, trying to convince them will not work. Uh, this is one thing that pretty much every coach on, on YouTube will tell you because <laughs> I don't think it's ever worked. And even, if, even in the short term, if it does work, it's not going to last because that person is not coming back because they really want to. They may feel uh, sorry for you. They may feel pity for you. Uh, their guilt that they're hurting you might get a bit uh, too much. But if it works in the short term, it's probably not going to last because you're not getting back together uh, for the right reasons. And everybody on the planet, we're all different. We're all humans. <clears throat> we all have free will. And it's really not in our interest to try to convince anybody to do anything, if you know what I mean. Um, I mean, you don't like being told what you can and can't do. So if you're having those sort of thoughts, well, I'll, I'll just ring them up or I'll send them an email or something to convince them that we should be together. Uh, it, it's not going to work and they probably won't reply. And that's just going to make you feel even worse. OK, so please, please uh, steer away from that one. If uh, they do start changing their mind, you can start a bit fresher, uh, newer, just with a, a casual sort of a, a even a friendship based thing, depending on where you're at. <clears throat> and then you can tell them further down the track, if you are back together, the stuff that, you know, we're back together, we're meant to be together, all of that. But please don't go ringing them up or texting them and trying to convince um, them that you should be together. Now, another reason is just friends, you know, oh, we're friends. My ex said that we could be friends. And I did another video on this channel um, about the dangers of becoming friends with someone that you've just been in a relationship with. And aside from the fact that it's going to keep you stuck and it's going to drive you crazy, it's not authentic, if you know what I mean. Um, you could agree to it. You could say, okay, well, we'll be friends. But if you're going to be meeting up with them with this agenda that, you know, you still want to be with them um, and you want to rekindle the relationship, then, but they are only interested in friends. Well, then being friends with them in, in the initial term is, is not going to help your cause. Um, it's going to prolong your healing or delay your healing. Uh, and it's also going to not be authentic because you're going to be sitting there wanting more, okay? And then what happens if they, then they start dating someone else and they want to tell you all about it? That's what friends do. Now, are you going to be able to handle that? In my other video that I spoke about um, being friends with your ex, I did say in that video that eventually perhaps you guys can be friends, okay? And even from there... Uh, perhaps something will reignite. But in a lot of times, it takes quite a while to be friends with a, an ex-partner. And obviously, if there was abuse or violence or anything really, really nasty like that, friends is probably never going to happen. But if you're coming up with friends as an excuse to break no contact and say, okay, well, we can be friends, 
just keep in mind, are you healed? Are you over the situation? Can you be true friends with that person uh, and not have a, an agenda behind it? Because that's also going to affect how you act around them. Um, one reason, this, this, is, this is really in the initial period of the breakup, but the sex, okay, um, if you had a good sex life and you're comfortable with each other, and then of course, you know, sex is going to be another reason to break no contact. Maybe we can just hang out for dinner and la 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 or jump into bed. And um, while that's all well and good, I think it's only going to prolong the inevitable. Um, to be honest, this is what happened to me. Um, once I moved out of the house, we continued to catch up and we continued to have sex for about three months until she finally was uh, strong enough to then walk away for good. And uh, it, it was just more damaging for me because uh, sex, obviously, it, you're, you're going to go through withdrawals from sex because of all the chemicals that get released during sex. Uh, so it's very hard, um, but that's what happened is, you know, you have sex for a while, but then the other person sort of starts to drift away, drift away. And it, again, it can just prolong the inevitable, delay your healing, and in some ways make it worse because in, it's like giving up cigarettes and just having one, that one more cigarette, you know, or uh, giving up drinking and just having that one more beer. So... As hard as that one is, that's really hard one, that one, especially if you had a good sex life. It's uh, a hard one, but it's definitely not a reason to go breaking no contact. Uh, and then sort of there's handfuls of other reasons, like um, you want to collect something from their house that you don't really need. Um, hopefully you've already sorted all that out. Or you want to return something to them that they don't really need, like a sweater or a you know, oh, I've got that favourite pair of socks of yours here and, you know, you probably want them back or I want to come over and collect that uh, plastic bowl that I used to eat my cereal out of. You know, little things like that, just things that you could do without is just another reason to break no contact and you're going to set yourself back if you're still hurting, okay? Um, another reason is you want to tell them something. Um, this has been advocated by some coaches where you send a text or a message saying that you've got something to tell them and you'll tell them next time you see them or, you know, and if you make something up, that's not going to be good if you have something legitimate. But, um, you know, when I first started university, uh, I, I was very proud of myself. And so when you accomplish things, you feel that you want to share that with that person. Um, but unfortunately, you're not together anymore. And, you know, they may or may not be um, happy to hear that. Let's say you got a promotion at work or you got a pay rise or you, you finished a hundred, you know, or a, not hundred, but 10 kilometer marathon uh, and you were proud of that it was an accomplishment. You want to share that with that person. Uh, they may be um, happy to hear that, uh, but then you're going back to, the way things are now so you know again if you've got that agenda behind the contact that is also going to probably just make you feel rejected again set you back again so any other little reasons that you can come up with um, you know like I simply must contact them well I'll unfortunately you simply mustn't contact them you know especially at this stage of the journey okay um, because my channel is sort of you know, I'd love to see people get back with their partner and I might do a few more videos geared towards that, but uh, I'm more about trying to protect you from um, doing yourself more damage and more hurt. It, it's, it's painful stuff and it can take every amount of effort to recover from this as it is, okay, without continuing to sort of contact that person, okay. So we looked at some of the reasons why you come up with that you want to contact that person, okay? So here's a little bit more or a, little, a couple more reasons which we did talk about back there about why you mustn't, okay? Now, I think the worst one is you hurt more, you get hurt more because you've got that expectation that you can, you're going to convince them or you've got something to tell them or, you know, any of those other reasons we looked at, uh, if you get rejected again, um, 
the hurts, you, you're wanting things to fix straight away, basically, because you're going through tremendous anxiety, you're going through that separation, that withdrawal, and having, you know, memories of how things were so good, and you're wanting to um, rekindle things basically straight away, but unfortunately, it doesn't happen like that. That's not what the other person wants. If they did, they would tell you. So what happens is you contact that person. You might go for lunch with them or something, um, hang out with them for an hour or two, have a great time. You know, oh, yeah, things have been good. Oh, yeah, uh, I've missed you, anything like that. Okay, well, I've got to go now, and you go back to your life, okay, and then the hit wears off. The hit wears off, <clears throat> and that's where the pain comes back. It's like you've had a hit of that drug. You've been around them, you've seen them, you've you smelled them, you may have even hugged them. Uh, and, you know, you probably, in the early stages, you may have even had sex with them. But then you go back to your life um, and the hit will wear off and that's when the pain will intensify. So that is one main reason uh, why to not contact them, okay? Now, this is um, the second reason is it's a similar thing, it's not talk so much about the hurt, but you're gonna reset the time that you've already done in no contact. So you may have, um, you may have already done a week or a month in, in no contact, and you should be proud of that because no contact is hard, 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 it's damn hard. Every day that you push through without contacting that person, uh, and giving into your emotional state, you should be damn proud of that. Um, so let's say you go three weeks or a month without contacting them, and then you break and you go through what we've just discussed, okay, and you get hurt again or stuff. You're basically resetting um, the time you've already spent in no contact. You've almost like, oh, I'm not going to say throw it out the window because the more times that you do that, um, You've, you have done, hopefully, some healing in that time already. So it's not like you really go back to square one, but you certainly go backwards, that's for sure. And you, you, you're going to have to reset the counter again there now. Not that you should be counting days either. If you go into no contact, it's just about getting on with your life, looking after your health and uh, taking care of yourself, okay? Not sitting there marking days off the calendar that you bought from the shopping mall down the street. Okay, now here's another reason why not to contact them. Um, they could be out with friends. So if you send them a text uh, or try to call them, especially on a Friday night or a Saturday night, uh, but really any night, you know, on a Tuesday night, they could be having a dinner party with friends. And let's say that they're at a party and they get a text from you just saying, oh, hi, hope, you know, been thinking about you, hope you're well. And they're there having a good time. It's that they're going to see that text and, and just go, oh, you know, this again. It's going to bring up negative feelings. The last thing you want really is for them to associate negative feelings with you. You, if you're wanting to rekindle things with them, you want them to associate good feelings with you. And um, the best, well, the best way for that to happen is for them to contact you because then they're putting in uh, that effort because it's hard for them as well. But that shows you that they have some interest in talking to you at that time. So if you go sending them a text or trying to call them and they're out with their friends having a good time, it's probably just going to annoy them. It's not going to come across that good, you know. And it also shows them that you're not out doing something. You're sitting around thinking about them. Some, and one step even worse than that is that maybe they're with somebody, okay? And um, I've had that happen to me where you'll be in bed with a girl and they're getting um, texts or something from their ex-partner, yet they're in bed having sex with you, okay? Now, when that happened to me, I, the girl showed me the text messages from her ex-partner and she would sort of laugh at them, <laughs> you know, and make a joke about it. And then we go back to having sex. And at that point, I always said to myself, I never want to be that guy. You know, if you text your ex or try to call them and they're with somebody on a date, or even worse, they're in bed with them or anything, that is going to put you, you know, way down in, in their eyes. Um, 
hopefully you're not going to know about where if they are with somebody, but I'm saying if they are with somebody and, the, and you're texting them, um, it's just going to push you further down in their eyes. They're going to lose more respect for you, uh, all, all that sort of thing. But um, that is a really good reason why not to why not to just contact them out of the blue, okay? Especially on a Friday or a Saturday night would be the riskiest time, I think. Um, now, another good reason is it's, uh, especially if you can't stop, and I see this a lot in the initial stages of the breakup, and that is very understandable, okay? That's understandable because you're going through that separation anxiety, your life is changing in a big way and some people just cannot stop contacting uh, their ex-partner, okay? Um, and it's going to make them annoyed and if you continue, it may even end up to the point where they start trying to get a restraining order on you, um, you know, and that's not going to be good. That's basically going to put the nail in the coffin in most cases. And they're not going to want to come back to you if, um, if you're annoying the hell out of them. So as hard as it is, uh, this is why most coaches advocate trying to stop contacting them in the, in the initial stages. Okay? And I've mentioned it in other videos that I've done about um, respecting their decision. Um, and you know, saying, well, I don't agree with this breakup, but I'll respect your decision. And then, and then walking away. That shows um, strength and it shows character and respect and all sorts of things, okay? So, yeah, look, another reason not to keep breaking no contact, especially, is that you're going to make them annoyed. And if you end up going to their work or going around their house or anything like that, you may end up with a restraining order, okay? Now, here's a couple of reasons what's going on while you're in no contact, you're building strength, okay? Every day, like I said, that you get through this, you're building emotional strength because it's so difficult. You miss that person terribly and have trouble adjusting to life without them, especially, as I said, when something happens, you want to share that with them or, you know, you just want to see them or anything like that. But every day you push through it, you're healing, your heart is knitting and you're building emotional strength, okay? So that's a good th reason to just continue it as long as you can. Uh, no one's gonna berate you too much if you do break it because most people, it's very, very difficult. It's one of the hardest things you've ever had to do. So if you do end up breaking it uh, and feeling worse afterwards, just don't beat yourself up too much, okay? Um, because it's a very, just go back and start again and see how far you can get down the track. Focus on yourself. Now, one thing I found that helps is the 24, 48, 72 hour rule. So if you're having uh, thoughts about texting your ex-partner or you want to call them up or you want to sort of see them or any, any contact like that, Let's say you're considering sending an email or a text, okay? So you visualize yourself sending that text and then you think about how am I going to feel 24 hours later, 48 hours later, 72 hours later, you know, what difference is sending that text going to make and, and how am I going to feel? You might feel good right then at the time. Um, and you might even get a, oh, nice to hear from you or anything, a reply, and then back to nothing. How are you going to feel 24 hours after that? How are you going to feel 48 hours after that? You know, if you think about that before you do it, um, hopefully that will help you to realize why you shouldn't. Okay, now here's the final point, and this is the underlying point of this whole video, okay? Eventually. Now, no one is saying to cut off contact with that person forever unless they were abusive or they were violent or something like that, then you've got every right to. But if um, it was amicable, if the relationship was a good relationship but ended for whatever reason um, and you still do can talk to each other, look, eventually you can contact them. You know, Eventually you can maybe catch up and see how they are, um, check in with them, 
but you've got to make sure that you're healed first. Uh, if you're still in this emotional hurt, if pain, all that sort of stuff, it's much, much better to, to push on until you get to that point where you're not going to be so worried about it, okay? And you may even find that when you get to that point that you don't, you don't want to contact them. But please take note of everything I've said in this video while you're still hurting because all it's doing is ripping the band-aid off the wound. That's all you're doing, okay? And you're probably going to, if you keep contacting them, you're probably going to push them further away as well. So that's it for today's video. I hope that helps. Uh, if it helps one person, I'm glad I put it up. If you know somebody that it could help, please share it with them. Put a subscribe down below and a like on the video. Uh, I've got my email down below in the notes with some other resources that may help you and uh, may come in handy. But please, in the meantime, take care of yourself and your health and your heart. Just don't